Hi, welcome to Paul's Tackle Reviews. My name's Paul Cresswell. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to give you some real life reviews of tackle that's been out on the bank, tried and tested by an unbiased, unsponsored angler, and that's me. Today we're outside and we're looking at my shuttle trolley. So we all carry too much stuff and I don't carry the most stuff for the people I see about there but I've got a huge amount of stuff and when my family watch this they will just think wow you're only going fishing do you really need all that and um, we all try and have a tidy out and clear out and not take stuff just in case inevitably stuff just creeps back in so we we all need something to carry our gear now, especially if you're a pole angler, you've got the ro the roos and the rollers and all that comes with that. You need a lot of capacity and you need some kind of barrow or shuttle if you're going to venues where you simply can't park behind your peg. So I bought a two wheel Preston shuttle around eight years ago and I've used that for about four years before I got the uh, four-wheel conversion kit. So the two-wheel one comes as standard. Um, you get the arms, you get the bag, you get the base, and you get the two wheels to put at the front. And that's great. And it's surprising how well balanced it can be and you can carry stuff. But inevitably as we get more and more stuff a four-wheel shuttle or a four-wheel trolley is really important so the conversion kit that you get is basically two wheels to go in the back part of the legs there so you 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 then have four wheels the back two are further apart than the front two don't know if you can see that on there now this is different to a four-wheel shuttle if you buy the four-wheel version the rear two legs are about the same width as the front two and they also have a connecting bar as well I actually think this design is better because with the rear wheels being further apart it gives you more stability on uneven ground and it's just easier to push so it's, it comes in various bits it's take apart so you can take the handles off you can take the bar and the bag off you can take the frame off at the bottom you can take the wheels off you can take whatever you've got at the front for holding the box off so it comes in lots of different parts i'm going to show you later my vehicle which is quite unique which means I never have to take this apart I can wheel this in and out of my vehicle fully loaded and that saves me an enormous amount of time so as with all things fishing and if you've watched my other videos you'll have seen this nothing is perfect we do need to amend and work with stuff and I'll put some up close photos here uh, the first thing is, and you'll have seen this on my review of my box that I did, I've got two of the Preston Inception arms to support the to support the box at that end. I will be loading the trolley in a minute so you can see it fully loaded and how I do that. The second one is the the handles are too low on the shuttle as supplied and I've got some adapters here and they're simply inserts at both ends with a screw on they're absolutely rock solid they've never moved I got those off a guy on eBay I think they were about 18 pounds so that raises the handle height to what I would say is really comfy now otherwise you can find yourself stooping a bit and if you're going downhill it can kind of feel like he's getting away from you uh, inevitably when you're going over uneven ground it's just it's jostling it's moving around sometimes 
the wheels can come a little bit on loose. I've never had anything fall off, but occasionally I just check all of those. That isn't a problem with shuttles, that's a problem with all um, trolleys from what I've seen, what people say on forums, etc. That inevitably it's just part of using a trolley on uneven ground and things getting moved about. Lastly, the plastic handles, um, they're kind of wedged on and I put some tape there because they can come off in your hand. Uh, since I put the tape on, they haven't. I've, I've seen people say this with other trolleys, I would never just hold the, that and go down a hill because you might find that you've got two plastic handles and a trolley heading off into the distance. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to try and position this and I'm going to load it as I would use it for fishing. Now I've got the microphone cable here so if I, if I move in a funny way it's only down to that. So the first thing I've got is I've got the bag. This is the original bag. It's wearing incredibly well. There's no signs of, of any damage on it. And in there I have a small cool bag and a few bits but generally the bait I have maybe in my bait fridge that I've got ready for the day I will just put that in there to go. So the first thing I put on is my box. It's the MAP H30 light. I use the word light advisedly. None of us have got anything that's very light. So that sits there on the uh, Preston Inception uh, arms. As I showed last week, I'll put some close up photos. I then have a kind of EVA from Matrix that's got lots of bait, pellets, uh, wafters, corn, all of that. That goes underneath in the space I've got. Those of you that will have seen the review of what's in my box know that as I've only got one shallow side drawer and a tray I now have this with all the other bits that you might put in so I've got all my, my toss pots and hook length boxes and a few of the bits and bobs that's on my other video. I just put that on top of there. So you can see I've still got lots of attachments on my box. I've actually got my feeder arm here and I've got my uh, side tray support arm. I've even got the two brackets for using the pole the pole support at the front there on as well. Watch the cable. There we have the Mozilla trolley bag. I've done a video on that. Then I have two landing nets, always take two. My matrix extending side tray, again, separate video already on my YouTube channel. Roller bag, I've got two rollers in there, a roost, um, top kit roost, various other bits and bobs. So then I've got my rod holder. There isn't actually very much I carry in there now. I've got my Guru top kit case in which I have my pole and most of my top kits. 
I've got a 16 metre extension in and I've got a couple of dolly butts in there so that's really light. I've done away with tubes for my pole using the Guru Fusion X case which is also a video I've done. And finally I've got my Supera 4 rod ready hold on. So then to keep all that secure I've got a couple of straps I got off eBay. I'll put some photos of these but I put the the straps over that part there and over the end there so these are not bungee straps and I have to say not a big fan of bungees especially cheap bungees I think they're always susceptible to break an injury it could do some damage to your eye I just don't like bungees and I've been using these straps now for around three years and I haven't had any difficulties at all with these straps. A little bit of cabling difficulty with the microphone and we're back. So there we have it fully loaded ready to go as I said you find it hard to believe I don't carry as much as anybody but that is really easy to push really comfy I can still access my bag through a gap I've got down here if I need anything and that's how I use it so now I'm going to take you on to my vehicle and this is quite a unique vehicle and when people see this vehicle they cannot believe that I can just wheel this in and wheel it out just sorry just to say if I'm taking nets and I've got a net bag I'll put it over the front and use the strap and that's fine so as some of you are aware uh, my wife's disabled so we have a vehicle that allows us to take the wheelchair now um, that's an adapted vehicle specifically to take a wheelchair they're called wheelchair adaptive vehicles or WAVs for short and most of those vehicles you will see the passenger and the driver maybe some seats and then you will wheel the wheelchair in behind that and fix it and then the person in the wheelchair sits at the back of the vehicle far rarer but there are vehicles out there are called up front wheelchair accessible vehicles where the wheelchair user can be sat next to the driver so there's a big cutout in the vehicle some of the conversion costs are huge they have to move fuel tanks they have to do electrics and then you can drive in and there's a ramp and that enables the wheelchair user like I say to sit up front but what it's given me is the opportunity to wheel this in straight in and it's next to me when I'm driving and I use the wheelchair clip functions to clip it at the back at the front so it doesn't move forward or backwards and simply when I get there I unclip the two clips and I just wheel it out and I'm ready to go that gives me more fishing time which is great it also means all that unloading doesn't have to be done and to be honest even in my garage I normally leave my box on the trolley and it just sits there in the garage because I never need to take it off so I'll show you some photos and give some description of the vehicle hope you find that interesting now these vehicles are out there 
they carry a price premium because there is a big conversion that has been done. My vehicle is still a really great vehicle to drive. That isn't affected by the conversion. Obviously you do lose some seating and there are two rear fold down seats in my vehicle so it's a three seater plus a space for a wheelchair user. So I hope you found that interesting there, um, seeing how I've loaded, how I use my vehicle. If you've got any questions, uh, put them in the comments below. Always appreciate comments. I try and get back to any questions that people have asked. If you want to give me a thumbs up, that's great. That helps spur me on. I haven't done a video for a couple of weeks mainly because the days I've been free it's been absolutely freezing and I didn't want to be outside and it's been really windy which doesn't work with the microphone but I'm hoping to do one a week my next video is the matrix double-sided feeder box and I can take you through that how I use it how good that has been and then the one after I'm going to look at the Preston rod rod bands I've not had these long but I can see that they're a really good product and they will protect your rod and protect your tips as well. I'm also going to quickly put up there a list of all my previous videos. Well it's not all the videos, it's some of the videos there. If you go on my YouTube channel you can see all of the videos and watch them back. And we're getting towards 30,000 views now in total of all the videos that I've put up. Until next time, tight lines.